Hello guys, we have a massive update on the 1979 BMW 520. As you guys know, this car has been sat in a barn for the past 30 years or so. In the previous video, you'll see that I did try to get this engine unstuck as it was pretty badly seized. Got a breaker bar on there on the bottom crankshaft pulley, of course, but yeah, this thing really just was not budging. Before we get into things today, do make sure you give this video a like, it really does help me out, it shows your appreciation and it lets me know that you want to see more videos like this. Now then, where are we currently at? As you can see, remove the bonnet just to give us much better access. Now, I do have some good news. The engine does rotate. When I say the engine, the crankshaft does rotate. As you can see, the crankshaft is definitely turning there. It's not just the bolt loosening. So the crankshaft is moving, but the camshaft is not moving. So what does this mean? Well, more than likely the cam belt has snapped. So currently where we're at, trying to remove the timing cover, just to inspect it and more than likely we are gonna to have to replace the timing belt kit anyway. Of course, it's rubber, it's been sat for 30 years, so it's definitely due a change. Strange thing though, you can feel the timing belt with your finger. You can just, you know, get in behind the timing cover and it doesn't feel like it's snapped. It doesn't feel slack, so I really don't know what's going on. Of course, we have to get this cover removed and then we can hopefully have a better idea. So yeah, let's crack on and uh, get this removed. Okay, so just in the process of getting the timing cover removed, a couple of things you wanna get out, out of the way. This hose here, this top hose, this bracket goes into the top of the timing cover. There is then a bracket that comes across here from the alternator and another tiny 10 millimeter bolt at the bottom as well but this should now be free so we'll have a look what's underneath okay so I can't really see that the timing belt is snapped Let's try and turn the crankshaft now, see what happens to the belt. Nothing. Nothing. So it's like the belt is just slipping around the crankshaft pulley. Okay, so have a big update. So we just spent some time stripping down the front timing cover and we we're trying to rotate the crankshaft again and we just could not work out why it was not, well, the crankshaft pulley itself was turning, but of course the camshaft pulley was not. The distributor, the distributor pulley, the distributor pulley was not turning. So it was like, is this seized? Is the camshaft pulley seized? But then on closer inspection, yeah, the belt is snapped. So has this snapped while the engine has been running is that the reason why this car has been parked up i mean of course we're not going to know until we put a new belt on i guess and yeah do some more investigating but yeah the belt snapped that's why the camshaft is not turning when we rotate the crankshaft okay then so a good few hours later and yeah it's not good news. Do I think the timing belt snapped while it was driving, while the car, while the engine was running? Uh, probably not actually. I think this timing belt has actually just snapped from me trying to rotate this engine. If you have a look at how it's broke, it's it's a pretty clean break, to be honest. I think if this was to snap while driving, this thing would be 
so shredded up it would be it would have been absolutely everywhere bear in mind you know the engines spinning at what well, i don't know two three four five thousand rpm i think this would have been absolutely obliterated so yeah i don't think this has broke while the engine was running so i guess that is kind of good news but why did this break or why do i think this is broke while i have tried to turn over the engine while i've tried to rotate the crankshaft so we basically found out that the camshaft is seized not only the camshaft is seized but also the distributor shaft or the distributor pulley that does not want to move at all either whether or not they're both related no idea but yeah the camshaft is stuck solid i can only imagine it's got to be the camshaft journals itself they are seized probably in the cylinder head now uh, it's a bit it's not the best because you know there's no caps to remove you can't just take the caps off and then you know inspect them or free the camshaft up it's going to be a case of having to remove the whole uh, cylinder head and then sliding the camshaft or i guess knocking the camshaft out because it's kind of slid in from the front here if you're wondering what this is by the way this is a bracket it's been bolted onto the front of the camshaft and then i've been smacking this back and forth this does move but it's just the slight play on the front of the camshaft the camshaft itself just yeah just doesn't move at all i have tried to spray into the journals with some penetrating fluid just not having it um, but yeah I think the camshaft being seized I think that's what has uh, snapped the belt because I think the crankshaft was so difficult to turn and then all of a sudden it just became pretty easy I think it became pretty easy once the belt had snapped and yeah obviously it's disconnected from the camshaft then so yeah that's where we're at camshaft is seized don't really know what to do from here if you know i want to proceed and you know get it moving again i've basically got to remove the head so am i going to do that i don't know yet we'll have to wait and see okay so it's been decided the head's coming off at this point really have nothing to lose the camshaft sees so it's got to come off to get the camshaft out is there going to be more damage in there we don't know yet but like i said nothing to lose just removing the head so intake side is off just unbolted the intake manifold left the carb and everything still attached exhaust side that is now loose as you can see exhaust manifold still on but the three nuts where it bolts onto the exhaust that is uh, they are free as you would expect two bolts or two nuts came away nicely the third one rounded off and had to be cut and chiseled off so that was a bit of a faff but yeah then we're now free ready to take the head off little coolant hose at the back there that is free it should just be the head bolts now pretty much Do you want to try it? You want to lift from the front? That's it. Got it. All broken down. There we go. Well, as we can see, a valve's broke. But if you have a look at the brake, it looks quite clean. So that is that's new. So yeah, I think this is just brake from when we was trying to turn the crank obviously the camshaft is seized and I guess the pistons may contact with the valve it's just a quick first view of the block to be honest it doesn't really look too bad in here let's lift the head gasket off well, that looks really clean although it's going to be a lot worse than this of course everything's got to be properly checked but I can't really see 
Like the balls don't even look that bad. Again, of course, everything's got to be properly checked, but I was expecting a lot worse than this. There's just some of the ATF that I put down the ball. Quick look at the head as well. Again, looks very clean. Can't see where, you know, head gasket's been blown or anything. Can't really see any real corrosion on here. But of course, valve broke. And this one, pretty sure that's, this valve here is probably bent as well. So, yeah, not the best, but not the worst news. Look what we've found. Camshaft removed, of course the rocker arms and the rocker shafts, they're all out removed. Look at this camshaft. Look at how badly scored it is. This was literally welded in here, had to smash it through basically, had to smash the blind plug through and then managed to yeah, eventually get it to come free but yeah, these bearings are well and truly shot. Never seen a camshaft seized like this before. It's got to be oil starvation or oil feeds completely blocked or something. I don't think this can just seize, you know, like this from just sitting. They're not particularly rusty. They're just, yeah, they've just seized in the bearings. So, not too sure what's going to happen next. Now, is the reason that this camshaft was seized in the head was that the reason for the engine being stuck or was it just a symptom to the original problem? So as I think I mentioned, this intermediate shaft here that drives the distributor and the mechanical fuel pump, that is also seized. Now, I'm not 100% sure, but I have a suspicion that this shaft also drives the oil pump as well. So of course, if this is seized, then the oil pump is seized. And so basically what I'm saying is, could we have a case that the oil pump is seized and that means that no oil basically got to the top end and that is what seized the camshaft. Obviously, we're not gonna know at this point. I have tried to rotate this, it just won't move. I've also tried to remove the distributor. That just won't budge as well. Of course, I took the bracket and the bolt out, gave it a good few knocks, that's seized, stuck in there. The fuel pump, that removed fairly easy, just two nuts holding that in place. But yeah, I don't really know what to do next. I think it would just be, you know, a bit of fun. And um, I think you guys would quite like to see it as well. But I don't know, let's say we, hook a battery up and see if we can spin this engine over, providing of course that the starter motor is still good. Shall we do it? Let's give it a go. I have no idea if this is even going to work, by the way. I can imagine we have quite a few ground straps loose, so we may not even have power to the car, but I guess there's only one way how to find out, positive, negative, so it's this way around, are these even going to fit, they look like they may fit actually, Ugh. this is where things might go very wrong, that's a perfect fit, All right, moment of truth, let's get the negative connected, Please don't be a fire. I don't hear anything. I'm going to assume that there is a good contact between the terminals and the battery. I mean, you know, it's only been sitting for 30 years, so there's no chance of corrosion, right? But I guess we should just get inside, turn the key, and see if we have any power. Okay, so. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous. So let's put the key in. 
Nothing. No, nothing. Let's at least make sure we have a good connection on that battery before we give up so early. Just a bit of 80 grit sandpaper. Alright, let's try again. We have power. The indicator's on. That's good. The key's not even in the ignition there. Oh wait, the hazards are on. Let's switch that off. Let's put the key in the ignition now. See what happens. Oh, the wipers are on. Turn those off. How do we turn them off? I think that's off. Oh. Not sure if we're supposed to have lights on the dash. Ah. Oh. Wow. We have a little bit of fuel apparently too. Because I did see that needle move. And we probably don't want any of that fuel making its way to the front. But as the carburetor and everything's disconnected, I don't think it's going to make its way into the engine, is it? But yeah, I guess we should do the right thing now and crank the engine and see what happens. Here goes nothing. I think the engine turned. It didn't sound too clever though. Okay, let's try that again. That spins very, very freely. If that camshaft wasn't seized, is if this intermediate shaft wasn't seized, this engine would have run. I'm sure of it. Okay, so. What do we do at this point? I'm asking for some advice here. Do we leave the block as is in the engine, knowing that we do have some slight scoring marks in the, well, in pretty much all of the cylinders? Ideally, this would want a rebore, of course. If you're gonna do that, though, you're gonna completely rebuild the bottom end. We still don't know what is the case with this shaft here, why is it seized? Is the oil pump gone? We just don't know. So it's pretty much an unknown for the block that is in the car. The head I'm only going to assume is no good. You know, simply due to the fact of how bad the scoring is on the camshaft journals. And of course in the camshaft journal bearings themselves as well. I mean, you could get this, you know, bored out. You could, you know, have the um, journal bearings oversized, I guess. But, you know, how are you going to get an aftermarket camshaft to fit this? And is all that going to be worth it? You know, I really don't know at this point. Of course, we have everything apart at this point. I'm kind of half tempted. I know this is a ridiculous idea, but I'm kind of half tempted to just clean this up replace the two valves because of course one of them's broken and then I believe one of them is bent yeah that one there that's bent of course and then yeah just put the camshaft back in put it all back together and trying to get this thing to run I know it's not going to run good at all but I'm just really I just really 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 want to get this car up and running and possibly driving if possible I mean, even for my own sake, it just make moving it around just so much easier, but I really just don't know what to do. Of course, if it was me and, you know, I was to do things properly, I would 
rebuild the entire engine. I'll probably get a new head, um, disassemble that new head. When I say a new head, I mean a used head. Disassemble that, you know, uh, relap all the valves in and everything, clean up the entire head. I would probably rebore the block, get oversized pistons, uh, probably the uh, crankshaft that's going to need uh, oversizing as well. Um, so I'd probably do all that put everything back together and then you could be fairly confident that it is going to run and it's you know it's basically going to be like a brand new engine at that point but it all comes down to a cost doesn't it i mean to do all that you're talking a lot of money i've rebuilt an engine my um r56 mini cooper s that costs thousands to rebuild that to do everything properly you know to change all the ancillaries and all the rest of it and you kind of have to weigh it up is it worth it on this car, I know it is a gorgeous car. It's a 1979 BMW 520, but it does have a considerable amount of rust to the body panels. The structure of the car, the underneath is solid as can be. You know, it does have surface rust and all the rest of it. The interior is mint and it's only covered like 79,000 miles. So it would be a shame, but it is an option that of course I could scrap the car i really don't want to do that i really don't want to have to scrap this thing i don't want to break it for parts but I, I, like i said at this point i'm all open to suggestions please do let me know down in the comment section below what you would do would you scrap the car would you break it for parts would you basically clean everything replace only the bare minimum just to get this thing up and running when i say the bare minimum like i said a couple of valves a couple of gaskets put it all back together and hopefully get this thing started up or would you potentially leave the block get a replacement head put that back together and then hopefully get it up and running or would you go the full way to a full complete engine rebuild and you know at that point you can be fairly confident that it would run and it would it would run pretty good but yeah like i said leave some comments down below i'm all open to suggestions so could we get this 1979 bmw 520 that has been sat in a barn for the past 30 years up and running unfortunately not at least on this occasion like i said you guys will pretty much decide the car's fate do i scrap it and move on do I do a half kind of rebuild? Do I go the full way and do a full rebuild? Please let me know. But I am going to leave this one here. Hopefully you all have enjoyed it. Please remember to give this video a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you have not already done so, and I will see you all in that next one.